If you're the kind of person that likes to look great at a party or just in the office without spending a fortune for a good pair of jeans or clothes, then Distilled might be the right option for you. Distilled offers premium denim and essentials at an affordable price. Their products cost just a third, one third, of what other premium brands charge because Distilled refuses to work with middlemen, bringing savings directly to you. So they utilize the same fabrics, the same factories, and the same wash houses that the best brands and designers use, but they skip the markups and they skip the middlemen, and so the result is pure, unadulterated denim without the retail runaround. Distilled has been featured in Forbes, Times, and TechCrunch, as well as on denim-clad celebrities in GQ and Men's Health. They have a 100% fit guarantee offering free shipping and returns until you find the perfect pair. I mean, what's not to love about that? So, of course, I wouldn't be talking about Distilled if I didn't have uh, a great promo for you. So, just go to dstld.com and use promo code ASMR, in all caps, to get 10% off your first purchase. So, again, that's dstld.com. Promo code ASMR at checkout. Once you sort of add something to your cart and you're checking out on the right side, um, there is a, a box that says something like apply coupon or apply discount. Click on it, type in ASMR, boom, 10% off, no problems. That simple. So, again, great products, great price, and you're getting a discount. And if you don't love it, free shipping, free returns, the whole shebang. Um, really, really cool stuff. So, again, dstld.com, promo code ASMR to get 10% off. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Sleep and Relax ASMR. Today we'll be reading some goodnight poems and haikus. Well, I mean generally speaking they'll be about sleep and rest and so on and so forth, but I uh, I haven't read necessarily all of them from start to finish, so maybe some are, are not necessarily all about sleep, but um, there's no worries there. Let's, uh, sorry, I'm just checking my notes here to see if I have them set up. Okay, and I do. So, first poem is by Margaret Thompson Hanvier. And I stumbled there because I'm not sure if maybe I wrote that down wrong when I did my notes, but I hope I'm getting that right. It's titled The Sandman. The rosy clouds float overhead, the sun is going down, and now the sandman's gentle tread comes stealing through the town. White sand, white sand, he softly cries, and as he shakes his hand, straight away there lies on baby's eyes his gift of shining sand. Blue eyes, gray eyes, black eyes and brown, as shuts the rose they softly close when he goes through the town. From sunny beaches far away, yes, in another land, he gathers up at break of day his stone of shining sand. No tempests beat the shore remote, no ships may sail that way, his little boat alone may float within that lovely bay. Blue eyes, gray eyes, black eyes and brown, as shuts the rose they softly close when he goes to the town. He smiles to see the eyelids close above the happy eyes, and every child right well he knows. Oh, he is very wise. But if, as he goes through the land, a naughty baby cries, his other hand takes dull gray sand to close the wakeful eyes. Blue eyes, gray eyes, black eyes, and brown, as shuts the rose they softly close when he goes through the town. So when you hear the Sandman's song, sound through the twilight sweet, be sure you do not keep him long awaiting in the street. Lie softly down, dear little head, rest quiet, busy hands, till by your bed his good night said, he strews the shining sands. Blue eyes, gray eyes, black eyes, and brown, as shuts the rose, they softly close when he goes through the town.
So that was the first one. The second poem is Dreams by Langston Hughes, who lived from 1902 to 1967. I have all my notes. And it goes like this. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Now we have a haiku by Raymond Farrell. It's called Deep Sleep. In deep sleep time and space warp and proportion, proportions are often distorted. Let me reread that one. I apologize. I really got that one off. In deep sleep time and space warp and proportions are often distorted. I haven't quite gotten down the, the timing of, of how I think I should read haikus. I definitely need to improve on that, I think. But let me see what else I have here. This poem is titled Sleep Now, O oh Sleep Now, and it's a poem by James Joyce. Sleep now, O oh sleep now, O oh you unquiet heart. A voice crying sleep now is heard in my heart. The voice of the winter is heard at the door. O oh sleep, for the winter is crying sleep no more. My kiss will give peace now and quiet to your heart. Sleep on in peace now, O oh, your unquiet heart. So the next poem is by a an artist or a poet whose name I will probably get wrong, but I'll try anyway. It's Rabindranath Tagore, and the name of the poem is Sleep Stealer, and it goes like this. Who stole sleep from baby's eyes, I must know. Clasping her pitcher to her waist, mother went to fetch water from the village nearby. It was noon. The children's playtime was over. The ducks in the pond were silent. The shepherd boy lay asleep under the shadow of the banyan tree. The crane stood, grave and still, in the swamp near the mango grove. In the meanwhile, the sleep stealer came and, snatching sleep from baby's eyes, flew away. When mother came back, she found baby traveling the room over on all fours. Who stole sleep from our baby's eyes? I must know. I must find her and chain her up. I must look into that dark cave where, through boulders and scowling stones, trickles a tiny stream. I must search in the drowsy shade of the bacula grove where pigeons coo in their corner and furries' anklets tinkle in the stillness of starry nights. In the evening, I will peep into the whispering silence of the bamboo forest where fireflies squander their light and will ask every creature I meet, can anybody tell me where the sleep stealer lives? Who stole sleep from baby's eyes? I must know. Shouldn't I give her a good lesson if I could only catch her? I would raid her nest and see where she hoards all her stolen sleep. I would plunder it all and carry it home. I would, blind, I would bind her two wings securely, set her on the bank of the river, and then let her play at fishing with a reed among the rushes and water lilies. When the marketing is over in the evening and the village children sit in their mother's laps, then the night birds will mockingly din her ears with, Whose sleep will you steal now? I'm not a parent myself, but I have a couple of young cousins, and I can definitely understand, uh, I can understand <laughs> the, uh, the premise of that, of that poem, you know, because they, they always want to sleep when they should be awake, and then they want to be awake when they should be sleeping. So even even having seen how difficult it is to parent and, you know, get a child to fall asleep when it's, quote-unquote, the right time is, um, 
even with my brief experience, I can understand why it is you'd want to hoard all the sleep so you can just give it to them whenever it's bedtime. My mother tells me that I was a very active child, so when I do have children, because I, you know, I do plan on having children, my guess is I'll, uh, I'll have a little boy or girl that, just like me, always wants to be up at all times of night. But anyway, I'm uh, digressing. The next poem on here is titled Japanese Lullaby, and it is by Eugene Field. And Sleep, little pigeon, and fold your wings. Little blue pigeon with velvet eyes. Sleep to the singing of mother birds swinging, swinging the nest where her little ones lie. Away out yonder I see a star, silvery star with a tinkling song. To the soft dew falling I hear a calling, calling and tinkling the night along. In through the window a moonbeam comes, little gold moonbeam with misty wings. And silently creeping it asks, is he sleeping, sleeping and dreaming while mother sings? Up from the sea there floats the sob of the waves that are breaking upon the shore, as though they are groaning in anguish and moaning, bemoaning the ship that shall come no more. But sleep, little pigeon, and fold your wings, little blue pigeon with mournful eyes. Am I not singing? See, I am swinging, swinging the nest where my darling lies. see what else I can find on here the next one is a dream fallen out of sleep and it's a poem by Nasir Ahmed Nasir or Nasser and it goes like this outside the abode of our sleep somewhere a dream burns somewhere tears sparkle Somewhere a moon smolders. Outside the abode of our sleep, somewhere the sun rises, somewhere the black beauty, night, street walks. Somewhere an earthen lamp hides behind a facade. Outside the abode of our sleep, somewhere bright birds flutter, somewhere beasts of prey prowl. Somewhere there's a memory, a forest, a desert there is, and a watershed, somewhere a snowscape burns. Outside the abode of our sleep, somewhere there's a cloudburst eyes, a cloudburst eyes stare in longing. Somewhere in the ocean of the heart, somewhere someone burns to a dry breath, a dry death. Sorry, the text is very small. Outside the abode of our sleep, somewhere two flowers bloom, somewhere we see each other every day. Somewhere the wounds are sutured. Outside the abode of our sleep, somewhere a roof is lit up, a door is afire. Somewhere hidden, somewhere revealed, outside the abode of our sleep, a dream burns. And so that was by Nasir Ahmed Nasser in 1979. And it's actually translated from Urdu to English. I've always kind of wondered um, when you do these translations just how accurate it is, right? Because, you know, maybe in Urdu they, they, they rhyme a little better or there's some words that don't necessarily have a direct translation. So it's interesting to, to think of just how accurate um, the Urdu to English translation is, um, how accurate it is compared to what the original poet or artist intended it to be. And I wonder if certain languages just have a harder time, right? Like if a poem's in Urdu, is it harder to translate into French? Does it come out more accurate in French versus English versus Spanish? But, uh, either way, I definitely have a few more poems lined up here. Next one is by Chen Chen, and it's called Night Falls Like a Button. 
From your grandmother's coat, you worry with your thumb the stranger's page. Aging spine of the black sky, night burps of the sleeping computer. Don't listen to the judgment of your scraped knees. Night anchors in your belly button, your pubic hair. Stars snore safely for years. Your smile in the early dark in a paraphrase of Mars. Your smile in the deep dark in an anagram of Jupiter. My worst simile is that I'm fancy like a piece of salami wearing a tuxedo, waiting with a coat of gelato. Your smile in the dreaming dark is an umbrella for all the ongoing, all the going, gone and yet to come. Orioles come for the oranges you've placed in the arms of the architect. Which birds will you pull into orbit tomorrow? You try to, you try to sew the night onto your own coat, but it won't stay. Too much memory weather, werewolf migration. You itch for the window shore. You row, a growing light rearranging your voice, the rain, your, lun you your lunatic photographer. It's an interesting one. Chen Chen. I forget where it is I'm getting uh, these poems from. I think most of them are um, amateur poets that, you know, post their work. And, and I purposely go for amateur poems when possible just because I, you know, I want to promote amateur work and, and people doing things for the love of of their craft but sometimes some of them are are um they're so unexpected in terms of of what words i read on the screen that you know i, I kind of like pause in my own head just trying to make sure I'm, I'm actually getting it right the next poem is to say before going to sleep by rainer maria rauch I would like to sing someone to sleep, have someone to sit by and be with. I would like to cradle you and softly sing, be your companion while you sleep or wake. I would like to be the only person in the house who knew the night outside was cold and would like to listen to you and outside to the world and to the woods. The clocks are striking, calling to each other and one can see right to the edge of time Outside the house, a strange man is afoot, and a strange dog barks, waken from his sleep. Beyond that, there is silence. My eyes rest upon your face wide open, and they hold you gently, letting you go when something in the dark begins to move. That was actually it. Sorry, I read it in a sort of way that um, it was on the next page, so I thought the, the poem continued on for a little bit more. A Ballad of Dreamland by Algernon Charles Swinburne. I hid my heart in a nest of roses, out of the sun's way, hidden apart, in a softer bed where the soft white snow is. Under the roses I hid my heart. Why would it sleep not? Why should it start when, it never, when never a leaf on the rose tree stirred? What made sleep flutter his wings in part, only the song of a secret bird? Lie still, I said, for the wind's wings, the wind's wing closes, and mild leaves muffle the keen sun's dart. Lie still, for the wind of the warm sea dozes, and the wind is unequator, yet thou, yet that thou art. Does a thought in thee still a thorn's wound smart? Does the fang still frat thee of hope deferred? What bird, what bids the lids of thy sleep dispart? Only the song of a secret bird. The green land's name that a charm encloses, it never was writ in the traveler's chart. And sweet as the fruit on its tree that grows is, it never was sold in the merchant's mart. The swallows of dreams through its dim fields dart, and sleeps are the tunes in its treetops heard. No hounds note wakens the wild wood a heart, only the songs of a secret bird. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to see in my notes. I think I have one or two more poems for you guys this episode. 
and let's see. Yeah. So this one is titled um, very aptly "Just Sleep," and it's by um, Russell Edson. Set up here. I don't know why I've got this this like pain on my left. Uh, it's like a very specific spot on my arm that kind of hurts. Okay, Sleep by Russell Edson. There was a man who didn't know how to sleep, nodding off every night into a drab, unprofessional sleep. Sleep that he'd grown so tired of sleeping. He tried reading the manual of sleep, but it just put him to sleep. The same old sleep that had grown so tired of sleeping. The same old sleep that he had grown so tired of sleeping. He needed a sleeping master who with a whip and a chair would discipline the night and make him jump through the hoops of gasoline fire. Someone who could make a tiger sit on a tiny pedestal and yawn. And that's it for that one. I don't know if that one was incomplete and the source I copied it from was... Um, it wasn't the full poem, but anyway, I, that's what I have for Sleep by Russell Edson. And let me check my notes here to see if we have maybe one more poem or haiku. And it looks like we don't. So that'll be the end of that. Yeah, that's that's uh, no more poems or haikus. So that's the end of this episode for Sleep and Relax ASMR. Uh, remember, if you enjoy the show, if it helps you study, sleep, relax, unwind for 20 minutes a day, whatever it may be, please consider uh, supporting the show via Patreon. It's patreon.com slash sleep and relax ASMR. There's a link in the show notes so you can just you know, copy paste into your browser just to make it easier for you. And um, we're dedicating time and, and effort into making Patreon a worthwhile um, a worthwhile thing for, for you if you do decide to help support the show. Because the show is expensive to make. It is very time consuming and um, we want to keep it up. So please consider uh, supporting us through there if, if, uh, if the show matters to you. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, ideas, you can always uh, reach the show at hello at sleepandrelaxasmr.com. And you can also check out our website, which is just sleepandrelaxasmr.com. So that's all for this episode. Um, thanks, as always, for listening and take care. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Sleep and Relax ASMR. This is just a friendly reminder, if you visit dstld.com and use promo code ASMR checkout, you're going to get 10% off your first order, and that's just because you're a great listener of the show. So, that's distilled, it's dstld.com, promo code ASMR, 10% off your first order. Thanks again, and take care.